folks, this is Frank, Frank Severity Normal. Now, a few videos ago, I showed you how the Alberta Healthcare Premium Tax was meant to be administered so it would keep its full value. And I know I've done four videos since then, so I want to refresh you. Today I'm going to reveal how it was gained, but first I want to refresh your memory. So, let's say that the poverty level was $10,000 in 1969. So then the exclusion for the Alberta health care premium tax wouldn't have been set right at the poverty level. It might have been set 5000 above that. So anybody making 15000 would have been responsible to pay their Alberta health care premium tax. Now I don't know what the exact numbers were and I haven't researched it and that doesn't matter. I'm just trying to show you how it was supposed to be administered. So <coughs> If the poverty line was at 10,000, the exclusion was at 15, all these people over here, under $15,000, would be excluded. Only these people would have to pay the Alberta health care premium tax. And as, as the poverty line raised from 10,000 to 15,000, the exclusion should go up, say, to 28,000. And anybody underneath that doesn't pay it, and these people pay increased premiums to keep the value of the fund up. And that's how it was meant to be administered. Also, it was meant to grow and grow as time went on, as people moved to the province and got into the Alberta system. Now, and as people went from 17 to 18 years old and went out on their own, they were responsible for their own because they didn't live with mom and dad and go to school anymore. So the, the fund was meant to grow and it should have reached a certain level at a certain time. And the reason you know this is true is because Mr. Prentice, when he brought in a health care premium tax, resurrected the system, he set it at 50,000. Anybody under that was excluded because that is where he figured it should have been at by now, had it been administered properly. Now, <clears throat> I figure it should have been at 40 to 45,000, but in the, in the neighborhood. Now, how was the system gained? Well, when it was first brought in, every individual was responsible. You wrote a check to the government, because the government's always been involved. They set up the system. A responsible government set up this system in 1969. The Tories didn't take power until 1971, and it was gained in labor as a political pawn in labor negotiations to keep peace with, with labor. And I'll show you how that works. So sometime in the, in the 70s, the labor unions were becoming more and more powerful and demanding a bigger piece of the Alberta advantage, the oil that was now, because the government was opening up the oil business. And they've run our society on the oil business ever since. Now, so the labor unions became involved. So the public sector labor unions and the private sector labor unions became involved in our collection of our Alberta health care premium tax. Now, I don't know if it started with the public sector unions first or the private sector unions first. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter that the private sector unions uh, were paying it as a benefit on behalf of their employees. That was a profit in private negotiations between the people who own the companies and their workers with their representatives involved. The full amount still went into the public purse. That was just an administrative change, these people between their unions and the Poobah Masters. Oh, by the way, I have government here because I want you to understand that government is in the upper classes. <clears throat> All the people who work in the government should never be excluded because they're taking three times the money out of the public purse. <clears throat> okay, three times of the average worker out of the public purse. They don't pay health care premiums now. Why? Why? 
In 1969, this was brought in to pay the increased health care premiums from the Canada Health Act and he uh, or increased costs from, from the imposition of the Canada Health Act all over the country. And not a single day has health care costs come down since then. I reiterate that. Not a single day, period of time, week, month, or year, have health care costs come down, ever. <clears throat> Now, so then, when the government saw this, they thought, well, we could set that up. We'll offer benefits to the public sector unions rather than, rather than a $2 a week increase in wages. We'll pay their health care premium. It doesn't cost us anything. It doesn't cost us anything. But it does, it costs society, because if they do that, if they pay all or a portion, they are controlling our purse, they are paying somebody else's taxes out of our purse, while those people are getting paid out of our purse. How ridiculous of a situation that is. So. I'm going to give you one example. In my family, I have a relative who worked for the government. Now, <clears throat> she had this benefit where they pay 25% of her, of her health care premium. Now, so what would happen is $44, 25% is $11. So she would put in $33 <clears throat> out of her paycheck from us from the purse her paycheck is paid to her from the purse <clears throat> now she got her check she'd go to the bank then she or maybe it was taken off at source i don't know <clears throat> but the other eleven dollars was taken after she was paid out of the purse and thrown back into the purse and that's ridiculous she's already being paid out of the purse public sector workers get paid more than private sector workers doing the same work and now she has the benefit of that and that goes for her whole career now when did she get that benefit I don't know I didn't check it out but we have 200,000 employees the Alberta government at least 200,000 employees and were they all getting a portion of this benefit paid out of the public purse what kind of a negotiating did the Peter Lougheed government do way back with then? They didn't. They didn't. They gave away our tax base. Now, that is all perfectly legal. Now, because they're the government and they know better than us. I'm going to show you that this is the reason, the main reason in my mind, why they ran a game on us for 15 years and wiped out the whole old system that's broken down there because they had to get it back to where it was supposed to be, where Mr. Prentice tried to bring it in in 2014. Everybody under 15,000 included, everybody above that. And I will show you <clears throat> these people who used to have this benefit. Well, when the system got wiped out, in 2008, when Ed Stelmack said, we're not going to do our job anymore. We're not going to collect your money and put it in your purse. Oh, it didn't cost them anything for the first six years. These people who used to have this 25% benefit, maybe some of them had the 50% of it paid. Maybe some of them had all of it paid. Who knows? <clears throat> you people lost big time. Because by wiping out the whole system, they kept every dollar from going into the purse. And if you look over here, it is what created $8.04 billion in debt. By the time Jim Prentice came, spent your money to rent TV cameras, put you across his knee and spanked you and said, look in the mirror. Are you starting to understand this a little bit, Alberta? The next video is going to start to show you
how they did it, pre-planned triggered events to destroy the whole system that we had because they had gained it and they had to get it back to where it was supposed to be in the first place. <clears throat> but them driving us to be at the risk and pay bank interest and pay bank interest, this is criminal. Somebody should be in jail for this fraud that I'm going to lay out for you in my next videos. I'm Frank Severely Normal. You have a great day.